Hello, my name is Abigail, and welcome to the Spiritually Hungry Podcast, episode 17. I'm going to be helping Monica and Michael, and Monica's going to be asking me a question right now. Hi, Abigail. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. So I have a question for you. The Kabbalists say if you are able to become this word, you can achieve everything you've ever wanted. What do you think the one word is? Hashem. God? That's a great answer, my love. The word that I'm looking for today is actually a word that you really do like. It's kindness. Oh. I love this question because I think when you ask most people, you know, if you could achieve this one thing, then you'd have everything. People would think, well, if I could achieve nirvana or happiness or love, certainty, right, then I would have everything. But kindness really, I think, um, I don't feel like people fully appreciate that word and how how grand it is in every way. And I think that most people would think, you know, I'm a nice person, I'm a good person, I'm helpful, I share, but that's very different than being kind. I think there's a vast difference from where we find ourselves today to where we could be when we consider kindness. And I want to share a modern day fable that I wrote because, you know, we're, we, we love stories and we're always telling our kids stories. A lot of them are ancient. Okay, it's called The Tale of the Other Glove. So it's a true story. A few years ago, um, our babysitter was leaving our house and it was a really cold winter night and she's standing by our door trying to get ready, getting her scarf on, her hat, her jacket. And I hear her huffing and puffing and like making sounds and taking deep breaths. And you know, I'm curious by nature. So, you know, I was like, what's going on? And she said, oh, you won't believe it. On my way here, I was at the subway and I had stopped at a platform and I was taking my gloves off. And one of them fell on the floor. And she saw this, in her words, this dirty, grimy hand snatch it. And she said, what are you doing with that glove? And the homeless man responds to her saying, well, I found it. She said, well, you couldn't have found it because it wasn't lost. So she said, give it back. He said, I'm not going to give it back. It's my glove. And he said, no, it's not. So I looked at her and she was still clearly very upset about it. And I said, but I don't understand. Why didn't you just give him the other glove? And she said to me, oh, I'm not going to condone that kind of behavior. I need to teach him a lesson. <laughs> to which I thought, I didn't say it to her that day, but what lesson are you going to teach him? He's really happy now because he has a glove. He didn't have any before. Now he has funny. one. And what are you going to do with one glove? You're going to throw it out and you'll go buy another set. So it got me thinking about kindness, really. And I, I've talked about this before. I'm not going to ask you because I know what your answer would be. But to all of our listeners, what would you have done? Would you have given the other glove or would you have tied, tried to teach a lesson? And I see this a lot in parenting also. You know, for all the reasons, all the right and reasons. And relationships, right? Yes. We are going to teach our child so they can learn a lesson because they need to behave in this world and they need to learn a great, you know, something or something will be lost and, and relationships also. But in teaching, do we lose that aspect of kindness, right? And be laying a message. And we might be right in what we're offering. We might be right in what we're trying to suggest to our partner or to our children. But what are they really going to learn in that moment? Will they learn to be withholding or will they learn to be kind? And I, I, don't think it's a, I don't think it has to be a choice. And that's why I think there's so many misgivings about sharing and being kind because often we think that we need to withhold, we need to create boundaries, we need to protect ourselves, we need to teach people, and therefore we close our hearts and our fists, which I'll go into a little bit later, but I just love this. Yeah, topic. and I think, I think the reality is that, you know, except maybe psychopaths, if you ask anybody, you know, is kindness a good thing? I think every, there's not one, per, one of our listeners, and I'm sure no psychopaths listen to us. Um, well, there's more psychopaths out <laughs> there than no. you would. Well, okay. uh, that's well except to, to you then. Um, right, there's nobody in the world who wouldn't say kindness is a beautiful thing. It's a great thing. But I think that's part of the big, the big problem as it relates to kindness. And for the Kabbalists, and I know for the way that we aspire to live our lives, kindness is actually the most important part of our lives. And it has a, 
I think it's important to understand why. Is you know, in, in, when you study spirituality, it's important not just to know facts, but actually know the the workings behind it. And, and I'd like to share what I think will give us both an understanding and maybe the greatest impetus to to act more in kindness. So. In speaking about the creative force, again, some people call it God, some people call it the Creator. Abigail calls it Hashem. Hashem. But the force that, that is behind all of creation, the force that is behind every single one of us, we refer to it as the light of the Creator, which simply indicates the, the energy, again, that, that created our world, that is behind all that is good, that is behind the, the lives of each one of us. That energy, the Kabbalists teach, that it has only one characteristic. One. There's a phrase, which is beautiful in the original, but also in translation, that this force, this energy, call it the creator, call it the light of the creator, is good and desires to bestow goodness. Or you can use the word is kind and desires to be kind. When you understand that that's really everything, Then the next step in understanding is this. In order for any one of us to be happy, in order for any one of us to be fulfilled, we have to be in affinity with both the force that created all that exists and with ourselves. I just want to stop you yet because I want to hear what you're saying. But I'm just thinking that some of our listeners might have this thought with what you just said. You're saying that the, the creator's essence and desire is just to bestow goodness. Right? So I have to ask the question because I know people are thinking that. Then how do you explain for the suffering or the pain in the world? And I know it's a big question, but right. let's just unpack it a little bit. So why do bad things happen sure. if the creator only wants good? So I think the, the, the most succinct answer is the fact that we are in this world, you and I and every single one of our listeners and every single human being who's ever lived and will ever live, to earn light, blessings, fulfillment, happiness. And in order to allow for earning, we were given free will. We have a free will to decide today, am I going to be kind or am I going to be selfish? Or am I going to be nasty or am I going to be kind? Now, in that decision, right, and and you you can call it karma or cause and effect, as I choose to behave, that is the energy I put out into the world. That is the exact same energy that I receive. And why do we have to earn it? (laughs) <laughs> okay. <laughs> you forgot who you're married to? <laughs> no, no, no. Just um, I'm trying, trying not to make this whole podcast on these. You like, won't, but e- I think each, they're really important. Absolutely. And each one of these questions, by the way, really deserves and maybe we will, at I'll least hold, an hour. Uh, for sure. The reason we need to earn it is because we are of a spark of that creative force, that energy. We are the creator. We are a spark of that force. And therefore, we would never be happy being receivers without earning. And we see this in our lives today. I mean, we know, I'm sure, many, many children, for instance, of successful or, or even wealthy parents who receive a lot of material blessings, gifts, but they don't really, in, are not able to enjoy it, often not even able to truly receive it because they haven't earned it. It's, right, and they so, don't have a desire to. Right, that so, so you can call it human nature, the fact that we do not really enjoy gifts that we have not earned, unearned gifts, or as the Kabbalists sometimes refer to it as bread of shame, meaning bread, something that you've received that you didn't earn, you feel the shame around it. But, uh, and often, we, often have a negative reaction yes, to receiving that because exactly. you, you don't know what to do with it. And the, and the reason behind that is because we are of that creative force. We are a spark of the divine. We are a spark of the creator. And the creator never receives, only shares. And therefore we, whether we are conscious of it or not, we are not capable of being happy when we receive and we do not earn. But again, each one of those two questions, <laughs> I feel like we're giving it short shrift because the reality is they each deserve at least an hour. But, so, but, but now to the original idea. Because that force that created our world, again, whether you call it the creator, whether you call it God, is of one essence. And that is goodness and a desire to bestow goodness. Kindness and a desire to bestow kindness. We will only be happy, we will only be fulfilled when we are living in tune with who we really are, with what the well, who force... Who we're meant to be, ultimately. Well, because well, if who I, you I, really are today is a, a really angry 
person, right? Full of jealousy and rage. Right, but, I, I, but the point is that that version of ourselves is never who we truly are. Even if today, or even if for the last 30 years, a person has decided to act selfishly, to hurt other people, to be mean, to be nasty, never to be kind, at the core of even that person, the core of even that person is a kind soul that desires to bestow kindness. And by the way, that's why somebody who's nasty all the time, who's angry all the time, who's upset all the time, who's not sharing, is not kind, is actually never going to be happy. And I can, and again, not oh, just... Yeah. Right? For sure, we've seen that. So the point is, and that's And the right. only thing is, if you've behaved that way for 30 years, it's so much harder to then choose kindness. Well, you have to really it, it, peel, the, peel all the all layers the that, that, you've, that you put upon your true essence. But I think it is important that we know, every single one of our listeners, every single one of our listeners, um, that at your core, you are a both beautiful but kind soul that will only be happy when you're in the state of bestowing goodness and kindness to yourself and to others. Can I keep challenging? Absolutely, go for it. So then what do you say about souls that have just put evil out in the world, like Hitler? Okay, well, again, you, you again we, I could ask you anything <laughs> you, I wanted. You can, but again, don't, don't, again, another topic that really deserves For sure, much longer conversation. Brush. I, 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 <laughs> brush. <laughs> <laughs> what I would say is, what I... <laughs> <laughs> what I would say is that, is, that, is that, of course, there are certain unique, I don't even know if we'd call them souls, right, but, but beings that come into our world and, and really... Really, are there just some that are just dark forces, dark yes, energy, that yes, are not actual there are, souls? There are. Hopefully none of our listeners <laughs> are, are, are that, and, and our listeners are... I do are, want to do another podcast on that, though. Sure. But okay. <laughs> um, Maybe in time for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as you were saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so at the core, at everybody's core. We, we, we are kind. We desire to, to be kind. And I will guarantee every single one of our listeners that any time, almost, almost any time you are unhappy, it's because you're not living in tune with who your soul truly is. And that's why, you know, to your point, you began this by saying that it's a word, again, it's such a nice word. Who does, you know, so who, will ever, who will ever uh, speak up against kindness? But what we don't, and I, when I say we, I mean, even you and I, in, in the way we live our lives comp to the greatest extent as it should be, and, and I'm sure many of our listeners, once you understand that this is everything, that unless I am not only acting in a kind way a lot of the time, but but really developing to become a kinder and kinder person, spending mo a lot of my time in actions of kindness towards others, I will never be happy. And I think that's probably, for me, that's the most important message, you know, because a lot of people, yeah, we're all, you know, we're all so busy in our lives. We, we have many reasons not to be kind or, or not to focus on kindness, not to carve out, out a big part of our daily or schedule. make it a priority. Number one, and when you say, it's really, it's the number one priority. The it thing is, be. is that there's so many studies that show us what kindness does, right? We're happier, we're healthier, we sleep better, um, live, longer. live longer. So in essence, we are actually born, as you just said to your point, we exist to be kind. I mean, all of the facts support that because all of the things that we chase, right? Eat healthier so we'll be healthy, sleep enough, hour, but, you know, don't meditate so you're not too angry. It's kind of keeping all of our reactions at bay. So we'll be, but if you actually practice this one word, <laughs> You don't have to spend all that money and time and effort and all of this, I mean, unless you enjoy them, right? But in terms of a means to an end, kindness is the ultimate. Right. There is a section in the Bible that says, do not harden your heart, do not close your hand, do not clench your fist. It says rather, you should open your hand, and it says that twice, and that there's nothing worse in the world than somebody who does not give with an open heart open hand, right? Because there are many times where people will do actions of sharing. They'll give big donations. They'll give charity. Um, they'll even go to a, a soup bank, you know, feed the homeless. But are you doing it with an open hand or a clenched fist? And that's all the difference, right? Because you can do the action without the consciousness and you're still not going to be kind and therefore you're still not going to be happy. Right. It's an interesting, it's one of my, one of my favorite verses, right? Because it really it underscores 
how you want to be living your life because we're always interacting with people. I mean, and I know I've, I know somebody, I know when I've received from people and you can feel the difference when absolutely. it's really given with complete openness and true desire versus I'm going to do it because I kind of want to or I kind of want you to like me or whatever the agenda is. Right, right. And I think it's interesting. It's one of the things I've noticed we've repeated a lot in the podcast is the idea of practice. And, and I think it's important that we understand that you, I, every one of our listeners has to be practicing kindness in order to be a more and more kind person. No matter how good we are naturally, we do not come into this world to stay in our natural state, even if it is of relative sure. kindness. It's to be developing. And again, let's bring it back to the, to the, to the real reason. If I want to be happier today, tomorrow more than today, I need to be becoming a more kind person. That's what we're saying. That's the, that's the, the bottom line. The only way I can become a kinder person tomorrow is by practicing kindness, which brings to mind a very interesting, um, really philosophical question that is raised by Maimonides. He asked the question, if you have two choices, you can either give, again, use the, the, the number, $1,000 to one person who needs it, or give $1 to 1,000 people who need it. What's the right thing to do? I like that question. Uh, I don't want to be wrong. Let me think for a second. <laughs> it's okay to be wrong, Monica, <laughs> even though you're not usually. It's okay I would wrong. say, I mean, there's so many variables. It depends what they're, I would say a dollar to a thousand people. Yay, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, but again, so, so the reason is, he says, is because when you give $1,000 to one person, you're doing one action of kindness. Right, versus a thousand When you're giving a thousand, because, and, and this is really the important point. We do not do actions of kindness really to benefit the other person. The real benefit of action of kindness is for myself. I need to be practicing kindness. So much better to do a thousand actions than one because by one you're, you're, you're practicing one. With a thousand, obviously you're doing that practice a thousand times. And if you view your life, and this is my hope for, for me and for you and for our listeners, that your life becomes about becoming a kind of person and there's only one way. You could sit home all day, you can listen to this podcast 24 hours a day for the next 100 years, you will not become a kinder person. If you go out and decide, today I will do one more action of kindness than yesterday, tomorrow one more than the day before, practice, practice, practice. Well, we were listening to that, um, I forgot his name, I didn't catch it when we were listening, we were listening to a podcast and he was talking about the kindness challenge and he had decided that he was going to do five acts of kindness in one day. And I actually want to do this because he woke up in the morning, he was like, okay, the easiest thing, right? I'm gonna call my mom and ask her if I can bring her breakfast. Easy way, right? Somebody you love, it's in your circle, it's not that hard to not be kind, right? It's like, that's an easy thing to offer. So um, he went to Starbucks to get her breakfast and then when he walked out with the food, he saw a homeless guy sitting there. So then he said to the homeless man, do you, do you want breakfast? He's like, yeah, that would be great. So he, the mom, by the way, never got the breakfast, which I thought was funny. So he gave the homeless man the food and then he walked away and he thought, well, that was the easy thing to do, but wait, I'm gonna go back there and I'm actually gonna have a conversation with this person, right? And find out if they need any other help. Which I think, again, most of us will go to the point of like, I'm gonna offer you a drink or a meal or give you a dollar on the street. But he went back and really wanted to find out more. So he's like, he started a conversation and the guy said, um, uh, actually, yeah, I do need help. I'm moving into an apartment today. Actually, I need help moving it. So he actually packed up and unpacked, I don't think he had a lot of stuff, but helped him move into this apartment, right? And while he's there, he gets a call from his friend who has a, a, tie, a flat tire on the highway. You know, hey man, can you come help me? So he goes out to help him. And then while he's there with him, He's like, and, you know, let me help you get some gas for the car. Let's go fill up your car. So then he went above and beyond. And I think that that's kind of the thing, right? Because life is a series of choices. And on any given day, for the most part, if we're having a bad day or we get in a fight with somebody and our ego is kicking in, is in the driver's seat, do we really go back to even like repair or be kind in the conversation? No, we feel like it's justifiable not to give in this moment or not be kind. I'll do it tomorrow or I'm tired. I had a long day or I had a flat tire, right? My, I'm exhausted, whatever it is. But if you flip the switch, right, and you see it the way this guy did it, right, to keep exploring not just this one thing. Now, how can I even challenge myself to take it a step further? I think that's really, really inspiring. And to have this internal dialogue. I'll, I'll give you an example. And um, 
So, for instance, you know, you and I often have the opportunity to be in rooms with, with a lot of people. By the way, I just want to say, we're in New York City. There's a lot of <laughs> horns, traffic, it's rush hour. Luckily, there's the kind of rush hour again. Yes. But that's all the, the noise you're hearing in the background. If you hear it, yes. I hope, yeah. Um, and I'm just keeping it real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're making me laugh today. I like it. I don't it. know why. I, I like it. I like it. Um, Monica usually <laughs> makes me laugh, but more than today than oh, usual. Good. Okay. Um, so... For instance, I you know we, we we find ourselves in rooms with with people, students, friends, uh, often, and and every time, almost every time I'm about to leave the room, somebody comes over for one thing or another, or a conversation, something they want me maybe to help with, and I literally and very often again you know we're all very busy people, we all have places to go, and you know usually the internal dialogue that I have going on, you know, so of course the first person who asks, the second person who asks, sometimes it's five people, sometimes it's a hundred, you know, if I'm giving a lecture, then afterwards. And, and I literally have this dialogue in my, in my mind, which is, you know, of course I'm happy to, to be sharing my time or any, anything, my words with, with this person or the next person, but I never forget, and I, this is for me. I need to become a kinder person. And that means not only the hundredth person, the two hundredth person. That's what. What more can I be doing with my time? I could be studying. I could be writing. I could be teaching. All amazing stuff. But at the end of the day, let's not forget why am I in this? Why is my soul in this world? Why are you doing all those things in the first place? Exactly to become a kinder person. I mean, you have the opportunity. Again, I'm being honest. It's not. Oh, you know, sometimes it's late at night. I think there's always many good reasons to say, okay, I'll share up until here. Not you know the next step or the step after that. But and I, and I can, you know, we don't usually like to give guarantees. I guarantee every single one of our listeners that you will find that if you practice, and that's why hearing this podcast and being inspired to go out and do five actions of sharing is nice. That will only, there's not, what's wrong with that? But, but the real, my hope, my hopefully the real takeaway is that you and I and every one of our listeners actually needs to be asking ourselves every single day, am I becoming a kinder person? The only way I can do that is by doing more actions of kindness. And, you know, we, we have the opportunity to meet many people, even many people who have done great actions of sharing, you know, give a million dollars to a hospital. Ten, but the reality is that unless you're practicing kindness every single day, you're not becoming a kinder person. And unfortunately, there are many people like that who can do grand gestures and from the right place even. They want to share. They want to give. They want to be kind. But if they're not practicing kindness every single day, you don't become a kinder person. And again, the objective here is that you will feel happy and fulfilled. Right. You will feel um, at peace, right? That thing that we're searching for all you the time. You will be you. You will feel you. This is the ultimate. Yes, and it's funny, you know, my, my mother would often uh, tell people, you know, somebody would come to her with a problem, upset, disappointed, sad, and my mother would say, if you're feeling down, Go immediately go do and share with somebody else because that's one of the surest ways to cure sadness one of the surest ways and again the science behind this i was actually as i was preparing for this podcast i was thinking should we quote that but i think i think almost every single one of our listeners has probably seen those studies that research it's the the reality is and again i think with the spiritual understanding we know why that is but the reality is that the studies science tells us that if you have a choice of doing two things one thing that you really enjoy for yourself and the second sharing with other person you will feel better happier more fulfilled certainly more fulfilled but happier when you do the action that is giving that is being kind to another person and by the way you know cuz i read another thing a story of a guy who was studying the whole idea of kindness and he wanted to see what a homeless person, if they would offer anything, if, if somebody came to them needing something. Really? So That's interesting. it was really interesting, really interesting. And he went over to somebody and he was like, oh, you know, um, I don't really have anywhere to stay. Or like he introduced somehow. And, and the homeless guy invited him into his area where the tent was, offered him food, fed him that night, and was so willing to give anything, half of whatever he had. So this idea that like, oh, when I have more, then I will be generous. Or listen, I gotta take care of my family. If I don't take care of my family, then I'm, my family's not gonna survive, right? It's my inner circle first that I'll be kind with, and then I'll extend it. It doesn't work like that. And those are just excuses I think that we use yeah. to and not have to push ourselves to be uncomfortable, because at the end of the day, we all crave comfort. Right. 
And, and it, again, I think it's a good point here to, to really stop for a moment and ask all of our listeners to think the following. If you're unhappy, if you're sad, if you're experiencing challenges, the greatest way and probably the, one of the greatest reasons you are going through that is to awaken you to this understanding. The only way you will be maximally happy at the, the degree that you're meant to be is if you're practicing kindness, becoming a kinder person every single day. And again, that's what my father would often say, you know, I'm not kind because I'm such a good and spiritual person. I'm kind because I'm the most selfish person. And I know, though, that if I want to be happy every single moment of every single day, I need to become a kinder person every single moment of every single day. And I need to be practicing that. You know, the, the Zohar, foundational text of Kabbalah written 2,000 years ago, refers to a person who comes to you with a need not as a poor person, but rather as a gift. Mm -hmm. And that's really the way to view everybody in our lives, whether it's the poor person in the street or somebody, a friend or somebody we don't know who needs help. We're not helping them. They're giving us, they're doing us a favor by allowing us the opportunity to become kinder and therefore happier. Seriously, as you're speaking, I'm getting chills up into my body. So I'm just thinking about all the times that I had the opportunity to give and did, right? It's like nothing, nothing feels better than that. It's just an instant, immediate high. Um, and you can find these moments everywhere. I think that Absolutely. far too often what we do, though, is that we judge people and we think, oh, you know, we shouldn't give. Again, that whole thing of the tail of the other glove and being withholding. Whenever you think you know better and therefore you shouldn't give, that that person's undeserving, you better give and give more than you plan to. Um, and, and for me, what, what awakens me to give is in those moments where I see somebody not being kind, then it suddenly like I wake up and say, wow, there's an opportunity for me. I better grab it before somebody else does. And I remember there was one day we go to 16 Handles a lot. It's a frozen yogurt store in New York, in New York City. And um, my kids really like it, especially Abigail. So one day we were, we were having frozen yogurt. I had both our daughters, Miriam and Abigail, with me. And some kids, like three, four different uh, young kids walked in and you could tell that they didn't really have extra money for, for even for frozen yogurt. And they had their backpacks on and they were, you know, which nobody really likes, but they had samples and they kept like overfilling <laughs> them and there's ice, there's yogurt going down their hands and the woman working there got really upset at them. And basically, and at this point, I'm just watching all this and I didn't even think, I mean, just watching, right? But her reaction was, you know, you always do this. You come in here just for free samples. You need to get out if you're not a paying customer. Now, then that bothered me, right? So uh, they're walking out, and then I ran over, and I was like, please, get whatever you want. And I want to get it. So one kid was like, no, 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 no. The other one was like, oh, really? <laughs> and, uh, and, and the woman working there looked at me in a disapproving way. And uh, so anyway, they went to get their yogurt. One boy was really humble. He would hardly put anything. I'm like, please add more. The other one had his overflowing. It was really cute to see this whole thing. And for me, it was like, it's so obvious, right? What an opportunity. I don't care. Why should we be sitting there enjoying frozen yogurt and somebody else not, right? So I think it's in those moments where we have the opportunity to do nothing or just to watch or perhaps even to judge. That's when something's got to kick in and say, wow, here's that gift that I need. Absolutely. And so you just reminded me of something again. This is actually in the, in the science and the research. I also got major bounty points with Abigail there. She's like, wow, mommy, you're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Abigail's watching this uh, recording of this podcast as well. Um, is that the research actually shows, which is interesting and not what we're recommending to our listeners, that even simply being around action of kindness, seeing somebody else behave kindly makes us happier as well, right? And, and it, again, we're recommending to our listeners to actually push yourself to, to do actions of kindness, but, but there's an energy around kindness that is, contagious. again, <laughs> well, more than contagious, it actually makes us happy, makes us fulfilled. And like, and I, I, for, 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 you know, I'm gonna repeat this over and over again, but don't be kind to be a good person or a spirit. Those are, that's fine, right? But I think to be driven, to wake up almost every single morning and asking yourself, am I a kind of person? Me. I know that I will not be happier tomorrow, or at least to the maximum degree that I can be, unless I'm pushing myself every day to be kinder. 
I do want to talk about extreme altruism, um, which is the op opposite of being a psychopath, right? Because I think that, again, and I think some of our listeners might think, well, some people are just naturally more kind, and that's just how they are, and that's how they came into well, the world. Well, that's probably true, right? Everybody's nature, there are people of different nature. There and yes, there are some people that have absolutely zero empath and, you know, <laughs> could care less if somebody is like dying in front, right? Everybody has different makeups. But I do think that you can absolutely push yourself to be more kind. Of course. Um, so Abigail Marsh, she's done a lot of um, work in this area, and it, it stemmed from an experience that she had when she was a teenager, I believe, and she was driving on the highway, and a dog came in front of her car, and she, to get out of the way, she... I think she ended up hitting the dog anyway, but she oh. swerved and she went across the median and she skid and was facing oncoming traffic. And she became completely paralyzed in the moment, like she was frozen, she couldn't move, she didn't know what to do, cars are coming at her. The next thing she knows, a car from the opposite side of the median, right, leaves his car, runs across the highway, the highway, Yes, wow. knocks on her window and says, let me help you move over. He gets in her car, turns it around and puts her to safety. And she was in such shock. He's like, do you want me to drive you home? She's like, no, she never even got to say thank you because she was still like, imagine. But that got her thinking, like, what would make somebody behave like that, right? Does, it, does, because the people, and so this started her whole life's work. A lot of people who are altruistic in that way, they're not even thinking actually. In that moment they see something, something inside of them says, I've just got to go help. And, and again, I think that's what's so interesting about this conversation because is that something that's just their makeup? Is that genetic? Or is that something that they learned? So in her studies, they started studying the brain and the amygdala. And in the people who were really altruistic, theirs was 30% larger oh, than really? average. And those that were psychopaths was 15% smaller than the average. But then the question is posed. Were they born like that? Or did it, it grow developed? because they were kind? Did right. the amygdala actually in, get larger? Or was it always like that? And what was really interesting in the study too, because what she did is she found people who donated a healthy kidney of their own to a complete stranger. Okay, I don't know how many people would do that, to be honest. And when she called them and asked them to participate in the study to scan their brains, they of course were more than eager. <laughs> they were like, absolutely, will you fly in? Yes, will you come to my place? We'll do, yes, yes to everything. And one group was so excited they came three hours early because they were afraid they were gonna be late, right? So it is a different behavior, but I think that's such fascinating information. But what did they find? What was the finding? Th that's, yeah. what, that's when they found, that's when they, so when these people came, they did the scan, they don't know. They don't, they don't know, know what comes first, the chicken or the egg, no, they don't. Okay. Um, but I think that's really fascinating. And I, I, I personally, spiritually speaking, right, with all of that, we, I think that it probably gets larger. Like most yeah, things that you put energy into, I would say yes. For sure, again, for sure, for sure, we believe that every person can change. So it might be true that every person comes in with a different baseline of kindness, but absolutely every person can change that and can grow it. And Right, Kabbalistically, that's what yeah. we teach. I wanted to share a story, but before that, I wanted to ask you two surprise questions. Oh, okay. Did you, prepare, you don't usually prepare surprise questions, oh, and I'm sure I, I like all of our listeners are very I'd like upset. to surprise both of us. <laughs> <laughs> so while I ask you the question, you can think about your surprise questions. So I have two surprise questions on kindness. First, uh, share a time when you wish you were kind or more kind. Oh, Michael, Michael, Michael. Yeah, I'm not a fan of surprise questions, let me think. Um, I don't have a specific. I can tell you the general theme. I would like to think, do you have an idea of yeah. when I was like that? For me? No, for oh, for me. you. <laughs> I only see goodness in you. I never uh, see it. I never see it. Now, um, I, now I have to, that, that's not fair. All right, you go first. Maybe it will. I remember, well, something. this is where you were kind. But what was that story in, You're the, so cute. In, the, in the supermarket, right? There's something in the supermarket. Yeah, plenty. no, we're not. Okay, but tell me yours. When were you? So I remember that. I think I might have shared this in the previous podcast, but um, we were sitting at, at, um, at a dinner, and there was a lunch, actually, and, and somebody came over with a plate of food that they had made. And I was in the middle of a conversation with somebody else, and 
and he brought over what he made. He was really proud. And he was very proud. I didn't notice that. I was in the middle of my conversation. I said, I said thank you and took it. And then I think it was then or a few minutes later, he said, you know, you know, he was really excited to share with you the food that he made. And I was so happy that you told me that. Right? You because you kind of didn't look at him even. And yeah. he was, I could see that he, yeah, I could see on his face. He, he felt was, a yeah, maybe disappointed. disappointed. So, so I, I remember, I think it was right then or. No, I, right then you called him. I, back I called up. him over and I told him how, right, how, I'm so, my, how well, much I appreciate really it, how, how, how good it was. Um, and again, one of the things I think, and this is again varying into the relationship aspect of things, but one of the important purposes of being in a relationship, whether it's with a spouse or with a friend, is hopefully they can catch you being unkind and help you become kinder, right? If, if, if we really view our life's purpose as becoming kinder, then I think one of the things I'm really appreciative of you, although, you know, but, but, but I'm, my hope would be that if you do see me behave unkindly uh, or that I could be more kind, that you would, you would point it out because that, that's my goal. You know, it's, who cares if, you know, that I made a mistake, but the point is that I can grow from it and change from it. So that's, that's one time that I remember. Yeah, I think for me it's when, um, like, it's happened where I, I'll be in public and somebody will, like, be really nasty or attack and in those moments I don't always feel like I handled it the best way and afterwards I'm like Ugh, I in that I mean really if I can excel at that this year I'll be really really proud of myself where somebody even for even if it's a misunderstanding they're like yelling at me or whatever it is um, I want to be able to just still look at them with complete empathy benefit of the doubt and just offer kindness so I have failed at right. that, right. but yeah. And the point is, again, I think, again, the point is always remember you're being kind, not because they necessarily deserve it. It's interesting. Actually, I think we were listening to, I think it was uh, Abigail Marsh, is her name? Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Abigail Marsh. And she said something that I don't necessarily agree with. She said that in order to do actions of kindness with other people, we have to, you know, sort of see them as good, that we have to assume goodness in other people. And that gives us the drive, the desire to, to do good. Right, because the, po the, yeah, but the point is, I and mean, you, you touched upon this a few times, is that, you know, that, again, in, this, in, in the world of science, they, they say that the, what will make us more, uh, want to behave more with more kindness towards others is if we see them as good and or deserving of it. But what we're saying is something different, is that, is that even if somebody is 100% not deserving, I need to be doing yes. an action of kindness for me. And I think that's, that really upends the whole concept I think most of us have in our mind. Yeah, we're kind to our children because we love them, and we're kind to our friends because we, th we think, you know, in the back of our minds, they deserve it because they do for us. That's nice. That's all really nice. But that's not the point. I need you, or whoever that is, whether you or do deserve or don't deserve this, I need to share for you for me, for me. And I think that that's a very important difference. It's a very important difference. I'll ask you, yeah, sorry. Well, this takes me to this idea of global responsibility. And I think it's a really important idea. Um, in the Talmud, it says, the world was created for me, right? So I think if you just hear that, you're thinking, great. So that means that all the riches and all of the beauty and um, physicality, all the things I want, were created for me to enjoy. But that's not what it means. It means that the world is my responsibility. And I don't know how many of us walk through life with that awareness or that consciousness, right? Thinking, no, putting food on the table is my responsibility. You know, getting a good night's sleep is my, raising my children, keeping them safe is my responsibility. But when you shift it to the world is my responsibility, it actually changes the way you interact with everything in your life, every experience, every opportunity, every exchange. And um, a person that comes to mind is Keanu Reeves. You know, he's, he's an actor, as most people know. I know you're like Keanu Reeves. That's well, the thing that came to my mind. <laughs> no, and I'll tell you why, because there's a lot yeah. about him I, I don't think people know, and I was really inspired when I discovered this. So, no, he didn't win an Oscar. He's not on the cover of every magazine. It's not, I'm not saying that as, as an actor, um, he's great, but what inspired me is that he is actually very kind. Um, when he was working on the sequels to The Matrix and he was negotiating his own contract, he made a back-end deal to take a fraction of what he was making and give it to the costume designers, wow. to the lighting uh, people, to different aspects. And he said their contribution is just as important as mine. Did not have to do that, right? Um, 
when his uh, when his sister was going through leukemia and she was battling leukemia, she did successfully, he gave $5 million to help with that research and then he created a charity that now supports other children's hospitals and other cancer oh, institutes. He also, um, he's just done a various, various work, right? He didn't, in, in ways that he didn't have to do. And Rav Ashlag says, ask this question, Kabbalist Rav Ashlag, are you desiring to live your life with responsibility for the world? And I think that's what it comes down to, right? What's the desire? Why are you smiling? No, no, it's funny. I just, it's not that I, I just had a moment of deja vu. It's very funny. As you're I talking. have never said that before. <laughs> but what I'm going to say is that, do you remember that other? No, no, no. I thought you no, literally it was some, some, something oh, really? weird. It was like a weird moment. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, another story. Like that we've really, been here. We've, we've done we, this we've before. We've been here many, yes, many times yes, before yes. together. Yes, thankfully. Um, and I don't remember. I don't know if you remember hearing the story, but this is also very inspiring. It was that the rape case, and I don't remember her name right now. I'm so sorry, but she was um, at a party at Stanford University campus, and there was drinking going on. And one night, um, this this guy basically she blacks out, and she wakes up to a guy basically raping her outside on the campus, and she's screaming. And then these two students who are actually from Sweden to exchange students are riding their bikes and they see what's happening they jump off the bikes they go they pull them off of her and they make sure she's breathing they make sure she's okay they call for help meanwhile he's run away right the assault the attacker and they get on their bikes and they chase him down they jump on him and they sit on him till help comes and all the while they're yelling at him saying why would you do this why did you do this what are you thinking what's wrong with you now for those two people, I can say to you, they are walking around with the consciousness that the world is their responsibility. They didn't have to do that. They could have said, I called for help. They could have stopped at any given point. And it's back to that story of the guy who did the five acts of kindness in a day. I think we have to constantly push ourselves, OK, what more can I do? Well, now, I have a question for you. Sure. So when was, uh, what was the kindest action of kindness? What was the kindest thing that was ever bestowed upon you? Uh, it's hard to say. I, again, I won't be able to remember the kindness. But I, I'm trying to think of. It's interesting because it, this is something. So about 35 years ago or so, I w we were traveling with my parents cross country. We did like a few of these, um, uh, you know, from New York to LA, from LA to New York, and I remember we were uh, in Chicago, and. We were st we were in a oh no, I just thought about the most unkind thing I ever did oh really <laughs> no, it's okay that was I'll share it another time <laughs> okay oh I think I know yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think our I think our listeners would really enjoy it oh, but, it's Abigail's favorite story anyway yeah I think you should share it but but um, well now this is just be, we should just call this Monica's vulnerable hour <laughs> <laughs> um, and we were so, so we were in Chicago it, we were there for for Shabbat for the for the weekend for Saturday. And um, we, we went to a place, like to a, to a, to a synagogue to pray with, with, with my parents and my brother. And I remember after, the, after and we had planned, like, like we were literally like, doing this on a shoestring budget, so we just bought like tuna can, cans to be able for, to eat that Friday night. And I we went to the synagogue, and after the prayers were over, some guy came over to us, to my parents, and said, you know, do you have any place, where, where are you planning to eat tonight? And my parents were like, ah, don't worry about it. You know, we were staying in a hotel, a motel, you know, we're just going to go back and eat with our kids. And he said, no, no, no way, no way. And he invited us into his home. And, and you know, it was, it was really, like, I, I literally remember, because, again, this is so long ago and there's so many memories you don't, you don't keep. Mm. But, but how, I don't have the words impressed, how moved I was. He obviously didn't know us. He didn't know who we were by his kindness. And I think this really but goes see, to your point. The thing is, though, what I said before, like, I don't know who would do that today out of fear. Yes. For need some, to protect themselves from, you know. Well, in today's world, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but, but, but I think but yes, that, I if mean, you're, that the more you think about it, the more you're trying to practice kindness, the more you will find yourself in these positions and actually doing the ki taking the kinder, maybe more uncomfortable, but doing the kinder action. And the truth of the matter is everybody was a stranger, right? We were strangers. Everybody starts out as strangers. And I think the fear of coming across a psychopath, you know, the chances are 
right. slim, I would right. say. Right, right. And actually, again, this is a whole other conversation, but there's actually um, many, a few books on this, and I know there's also scientific research, you know, that, that evolution, according to, to evolution, actually what, what has allowed for evolution and development of, of, of human beings um, to where we are today is actually kindness and friendship rather than, you know, some people use the term survival of the fittest. That's not really scientifically right. true. That what is, what is allowed for human development is actually friendliness and kindness. And as I said, it's a whole other conversation. But I do want to talk about one other point uh, that I, again, in listening to, to, to Dr. Marsh, that I, I took, um, um, I think, again, a different understanding than, than what she gave, and that is this. She was saying that in order for us to be kind, we have to push aside our ego or sense that I am more than somebody else. Because when you see yourself as more than somebody else, then you say in the back of you, again, consciously or subconscious, you say, well, you know, why should I give them of mine um, more than them? So, so that the diminishment of the ego actually is the step towards sharing or being kind towards other people. But Rav Ashlag, uh, the great Kabbalist and really the founder of the Kabbalah Center, says an amazing thing, one of, which I find very inspiring and true. He says, and this is often, you know, when, when, we, when Kabbalah we try to take steps back, meaning a deeper understanding. Why is it that we have an ego? Why is it that, that, that it must serve some positive purpose? Why is it that, I, that many people think I am more important than everybody else? By, by the way, we spend most of our time taking care of me, of those that I love, of those that I care about. Why is that? Well, that's the ego. That's the, the thought that I am more important, at least for me, than anybody else. But he says, no, the reason why we have an ego and the reason why we often think I am better, more important than everybody else is because we have that spark of what we call the creator, that force that created our world. And the creator is greater than everything else. That creative force that created our world is greater, more important than everything else. And that's why each one of us has within us that inclination to say, I am more important more powerful, more, more, more deserving than anybody else. But he says, the problem is that the next step after that thought is we say, and therefore I should take everything for myself. <laughs> right. When in reality, that, 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 that creative force says, because I am so important, because I am you know, maybe greater than anybody else, but I, that necessitates, therefore, for me to behave in ways that are more of sharing, which is more in tune with what makes me great, with, with what makes exactly. me unique, with what makes me that creative force, which ma makes me in tune with the creative force of our world. So it's an interesting dichotomy between the initial thought, which is, yeah, I am more important than so, so many other people. I am greater than so many others. But to what end? But that goes into the global responsibility again. If you tap it into I am greater and therefore I have a greater responsibility to do good on to others and offer kindness. Absolutely. Exactly. But I think it's but usually we stop with right, the I am greater. Right. You say I am greater and more important and therefore I should take everything exactly. for myself. When as the true thought is, yes, I am greater, I am more important, and because of that I need to be sharing more or being more kind than others. I think it's very important. Um, again, to understand the underpinnings, both the spiritual and psychological underpinnings, but really where that and really changing that and therefore where it should take I us. I love that. Yeah. I do want to leave you with this one um, fable from Aesop. I read it. I thought it was kind of cool. The wind and the sun bet as to which one can get a wayfarer to undress first. So, sorry. The wind and the sun bet as to which one can get a wayfarer to undress first. You just heard the undressing part. You wanted me to repeat it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll be me, you be you. The wind starts, it blows, but the traveler does not undress. It blows more strongly. The traveler remains undressed. Sorry, the traveler remains dressed. And in fact, he pulls his cloak more tightly around him. The wind blows as hard as it can. It blows gale, a tornado. A traveler far from undressing clings to his clothes for dear life. Enter the sun. It does its job. It shines. Now there is no more wind. It gets hot. The traveler takes his cloak off. The sun wins, not with strength, but with warmth. It's pretty, right? Yes. I think it lends itself to kindness. Kindness right. is that force. It's that shining warmth, right? It's never the latter. Right, and it's much more powerful than, than, than most of us appreciate. I, th I think, that, I think exactly. that really... It's stronger than anything. There's one thought, you know, I was thinking, one of the, my favorite quotes, quotes on, is from Marcus Aurelius, who says that kindness is mankind's greatest delight. Mm -hmm. 
and I think, and that's why I think the fable you shared is so important. I think our biggest mistake is underestimating the power of kindness for ourselves. Yes, for the world as well, but underestimating the power of kindness and for ourselves. And the lasting effects. Right, right. Yeah. I actually have, <laughs> I think we say this almost every episode, and a few other things and um, areas of kindness, but I think we should save it for the next time that we um, uh, speak about kindness. And I'll tell you that other story then. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Come on. We're Good. running out of time. Are we really, though? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'll tell the story. I just left it on such a nice, happy, yeah, yeah, right. Note. Okay, now, next, next time. Yeah. So, so <laughs> as we wrap up this episode, um, I would like to ask all of our listeners to actually share stories of kindness. So you can share a story where you were not kind, where you wish you were, a story where you push yourself to be kind, hopefully because you listen to this podcast. Um, Maybe we can even start a kindness challenge. Yeah. Like five things in a day. Let's do that. Yeah, I, and we can post about that. Ra- but ra- if I could just say, um, rather than five things, I think more important is five million things for the rest of your life. But I just no, 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 no. The put the, the the times you really don't want to be kind, right? Again, n- again, like we said but before. But see, I think that if you ha- if you decide right, and your consciousness is like, okay, so tomorrow's Wednesday, and I'm going to do five acts of like. Those oppor- for him, the opportunities kept coming, right? His friend then says, I have a flat tire, come to the highway. Then, you know, right. it didn't end that day. Right. Because as soon as you decide and you choose that it's what you're going to do and you also are now aware, then you're, you're going to notice things. And then to have to say no, well, that's not an option then. Right. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, again, my point is I think that the greatest practice and the greatest growth and ultimately the greatest fulfillment that, I will re- that any one of us will receive will be from the ones that we really don't, don't feel like doing. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah. So again, so so again, share your your stories about being kind or about being wi- unkind. Being unkind. I think I think by the way, I think sometimes we learn more from the totally. times that we have been unkind than from the times that we've been kind. And um, and again, we'll have the opportunity. I can keep sending in your questions, comments, stories in general to Monica and Michael at Kabbalah.com. And, you know, I really hope, you know, as we came into this podcast and we were talking about this, I was, I was worried, not worried, but my concern is, again, that this becomes just one other thing, um, one other, you know, hour of wisdom that a person receives. But I hope we, we, we've, we've expressed enough how, fun, I would say, fundamental. You know, it's really, if you think about the world's religions, if you think about all the spiritual paths, paths of this world, they're really only for one purpose, right? There's the famous story of the great sage Hillel, and the man came to him and said, tell me all the wisdom in one sentence. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. That's everything. And the rest is just commentary on that. And, and again, for I those... I why I remember that being, tell me all the wisdom you can while you're standing on one foot. That is what he said. <laughs> okay, that, that's like, what he one, said. one sentence. I was like, did I just make that up? Yeah, no, no. The love your neighbor as yourself. And it's something that, that the Rabbi, my father, would often speak about. And again, where the, we become religious people, some people become religious, some people become spiritual. You know, I mean, we know this, right? People, you know, start meditating. Amazing stuff. We, we're very pro-spirituality. But I remember one of the things my father would say is that it's very easy to become religious. It's very easy to become even spiritual. To become kind takes a lifetime. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing that will give you the benefits of kindness for your own self. That not the, all the meditations, again, meditations for the purpose of becoming more kind. Even religious actions, if you do them, for the purpose of becoming more kind. But don't get lost right. in all those details. If you can honestly tell yourself that this week you're kinder than you were last week, I'm not sure why you did any religious action or any spiritual action, why right. you meditated or why you prayed. And I think that clarity again for myself for you for every single one of us again even the best of us get lost in spiritual practice and in religious practice sometimes there's only one reason any of that came into being only only one reason why any of that exists to make me a kinder person and if you can't honestly answer that question then rethink all the spirituality you're doing you think all the meditation all the prayer that you're doing this is the only thing that matters. Am I a more kind person today than last week, than last month? Absolutely. 
So again, send in all your questions, all your stories, Monica and MichaelKabbalah.com. We are overwhelmed by the thousands and thousands of people listening. And like we said, you know, this, every time we sit here, we really have in our mind's eye the thousands of people who will be listening and hopefully improving their lives in some ways. And as I was thinking about this, hopefully, you know, every single one of our listeners will be a little bit, do, do at least one more practice action of kindness uh, from listening to this. Um, or five. Or five. <laughs> but one of the things you could do is uh, go to Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, share this podcast with other people and uh, give five-star reviews and write a review for it so that more people who don't know about the podcast can find out about it. And as I always say, I hope that you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed recording it. Thank you for... Abigail is saying, I'm not sure everybody heard, don't forget to show seven-year-olds this podcast as well. Thank you for joining us. Bye.